What's up guys, back on another video for the Cummins swap on the dually. We're gonna go over some of the stuff that we did. I didn't video everything, um, just cause I don't want it to be super like boring and some of the stuff is like all over the internet. So I'm just gonna go through the stuff that I had a hard time finding out and then kind of get you caught up to date and what we're about to do now. So we went through the whole harness and this is everything we've deleted. This is the computer that controls the TBI stuff, pretty much all the TBI wiring. You'll see that that hole is completely gone. We actually did it the right way, pulled everything out. And then pretty much anything that went from this pigtail to over there, we cut. And this is the harness we have. This is everything we need right here. So I'm gonna put a fuse box over here um, which I think I already talked about that, but these wires you see cut here. I'm going to terminate everything, get the truck running first. Then we'll go back, pull the harness back out of the truck, depen all that, and then we'll actually loom it and all that. I just don't want to terminate and loom the harness until we're done because that's backfired before and I've had to like unloom it and stuff. So I don't mind pulling the harness back out of the truck again after we finish it. So that's the plan right now. Um, I'm getting ready to put a pin out on the screen of that connector and the pin out that I put up on the screen is everything that you need for the L an LS swap or a Cummins swap to make it run. But I'm gonna go ahead and walk through what we're gonna kind of dive into today. So we're gonna take the front grill apart and start mocking up our intercooler, which is right here. Intercooler is actually pretty big. I think the inlets actually end up hitting like right here on both sides. So not sure if we'll be able to keep these. Maybe I'll modify them to where they can take like an LED or something. Um, but we're going to take this apart, start cutting up the core support to fit this intercooler. And then we're also going to decide if we're going to use the Dodge radiator or the Chevy radiator um, and go from there. So. Okay, so this is quite a few hours later. Um, we got a lot cut out. Oh. We got a lot cut out. The left side, we did a lot of learning. The right side was much quicker. Um, so we, I kept trying to cut everything out with a Sawzall instead of just drilling the spot welds out and then cutting one end and then just prying it all out, which is the right way to do it. You can see we got a couple cuts right there. I'll just weld weld those up, but we got a pretty big opening now where you can see. And the intercooler does fit. I gotta clearance some stuff here. And the radiator does fit, but like it's tight to the the engine. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get e-fans in there. The way I'm looking at it is worst case scenario, I can I can cut this support, like I can cut and notch it back and then add some structure in here. But that's worst case scenario. I'd really, really like to leave this alone up here just because when you cut this structure out, I mean, even cutting out what I did, it can make the core support a little bit flimsier, which the core support really doesn't, I mean, if the truck gets in a collision, it's kind of fucked anyways if it gets that far into the front end, but that's what the frame rails are for. It's a truck. It's it's not like it's a car, so I'm not super worried about like safety wise. It's just the hood attaches to this, and you also get a lot of rattles and kind of like movement up front. Um, you know, if you lose a little bit of the structural integrity of it, but. Intercooler does fit. I'm realizing how huge that thing is and that I probably should have just bought an aftermarket one, but I'm trying to do this for as cheap as possible, I guess you could say. Um, so it does fit. The Dodge radiator does fit. We may try and go with something else other than the Dodge radiator. Um, I even looked at putting the Chevy one in there, but the Chevy one is even thicker and it's even taller. So that would be problematic as well but um yeah so the only issue i'm seeing at the moment is if we can get fans to fit this hitting the hood which on the first gen that hit the hood as well and i had to kind of like beat a dent into the hood 
but it looks like this one's gonna be a lot worse than the first gen, I can't tell. Um, so what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm getting ready to clearance this so I can try and get the radiator or the intercooler in just a little bit farther forward. The other cool thing is um, I was expecting to have to put the intercooler out here. Hang on. I was expecting to have to put the intercooler out here. So I was expecting to cut this whole section out, which I guess I could do. So as I was sitting there explaining that, I kind of had a brainstorm, but it won't work. So I was saying that uh, I thought I was going to be able to put it out here. And I was like, wait a second, can I put it out here? But um, it would get into the actual physical bumper of the truck and it would just look stupid because I wouldn't be able to run that lower finish thing for the grill. Oh, also the grill would not, I don't think the grill would go all the way in. But anyways, uh, I thought I was going to run it outside of that. So I was thinking like there's no way we're running a condenser, but since everything's staying behind here, the condenser can still go in. We just might have to modify some stuff. Like we may have to move the condenser over, cut a different hole for the lines to come through. But it looks like a condenser can for sure work. So that's sick. Uh, I was really worried about that. So really our issues are to figure out our how we're going to make that radiator work if we use that radiator and then how we're going to get fans in here. Um, I can also delete this all together and put a cap on it and then put the oil fill in the uh, valve cover cap. Um, and that would give us a lot of room right here to I'm figuring I'm thinking we can stagger a two fans in here. Um, but I don't know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and clearance this real quick and then go from there. But I kind of want to just catch you guys up in the process. Um, I know it's not like super interesting, but yeah, that's the structure we cut out there. That's on both sides. So, and then we did get a battery for the truck and, uh, I got some wiring stuff. We'll go over that in a little bit. And then I also did this, I took the battery tray out and I'm getting um, it prepared to mount over here so we can have the battery on the right hand side or driver side of the truck just because that's where everything is um, for the 12 valve. There's no wires that run across to the left side other than the alternator, so. Okay, so we got the radiator and intercooler in. Um, I was able to get the intercooler back for more forward so you can see it's kind of it's pretty much flush with the course port shutoff or stopping point um but this is what this is the space we have to work with for fans so i don't know i want to say that's like three and a half four inches um down here is about three but we can kind of take advantage of like if we know we have more space here the head of the fan can go here and then if we know we have some more space down here, the head of the fan can go there. So I'm thinking we can stagger two fans. And then I'm, so I'm thinking two fans in there and then maybe putting one big fan out here to push air in. I don't know if that would slow it down too much. But got this in. Um, it's not like permanently in, got to make mounts. Um, it's actually sitting a little bit crooked because I got to cut some something down here. But this is as close as it's going to get to being in, I think. And then you'll see I got the battery mount, the battery bracket thing in, got the battery in here, actually kind of quickly wired up the uh, fuse panel. This is a new one I've never ran, but this is a, it's called a, like an easy C or something. So when this, when this pops a fuse, these red lights will light up. So all you gotta do is pop the hood. Oh, there's a red light there. So we know it popped a fuse. You don't have to worry about having a test light on me to test it or having to pull it out. I know it sounds like dumb, but it does make things a lot easier when you're trying to diagnose something like on the side of the road or something. So got that in, um, not, not mounted. It's definitely not being done being wired yet. Obviously all this wiring and stuff could change. I just wanted to kind of see what it was like. And the truck does have 
power to the inside. So really, really stoked with today's progress. Um, next time out here, we're going to try and finalize this a little more, but I kind of want to get fans first before we start making mounting brackets and stuff um, and see what we can do there. And then um, start trying to finalize some of this wiring up here and try and start the truck. So we'll get a the big gauge wire to run to the starter and then get a big ground on this thing to go to the block of the engine. Oh, that's probably why it didn't start the other day. I forgot that the engine wasn't grounded. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll get a uh, block ground and a good chassis ground and uh, we'll try and crank the truck over. It's not gonna start, obviously. There's no fuel going to it or any of that. Um, and then we also, I'd like to start the truck. I could start it on a, a like jug of fuel, but I'm worried that since the trans is connected and bolted in and everything, that it could hurt the trans by starting it since there's no fluid in it um, and the converter would be spinning. So a little nervous about that. Um, so we'll have to wait to get the tail housing uh, shaft section for the drive shaft to put that in. Then we can fill the trans with fluid and try and start the truck. Um, so we're not far off from, there's a lot of like things that, little things that have to be finalized that will take time, but we're not far from having a running and driving truck. So super, super, super excited, but um you guys will see me in like a couple seconds because I'm gonna come back out here. So back out here, got some more stuff done. Um, the biggest update would be that the truck now does this. So that's pretty cool. So the truck does crank now, like I just showed you. Um, so we got all that done. So we got our big ground ran to the block, our main power, which runs down to the starter, obviously. The Excite wires ran. Um, none of the wiring is final. I'm pretty much rough running all the wiring until the truck is running and driving. And then I'm gonna pull everything back out and loom and everything. I just don't wanna, I think I've said this already, but I just don't wanna build a harness and then continuously cut into it, like pulling the loom off and on. I made that mistake on the first gen where I like, I completely finished the harness and then I had to untape it all and it just makes it worse. So I'm gonna wait to finalize the harness until it's all said and done. So we got um, that done. We just finished wiring the fuel shutoff solenoid, which um, that's pretty simple. Um, we just wired up the anteater. So the cool thing about the anteater is on the first gen, I had to have it mounted in the engine bay, but on here, since we pulled the um, ECU out, we can now put the anteater where the ECU was behind the glove box. So up in there, that's where the ECU was. I'm either gonna put the anteater right there or I'm gonna put it right here. I'm thinking right here if the glove box doesn't hit it, but I think the glove box will hit it right there. So it'll probably get tucked up in here. And then I got to grab the controller from my house, but that's the wire for the controller. And we're probably going to try and hide the controller inside here. I'd like to hide a gauge in here, but it doesn't look like a gauge is going to fit. So we'll put the controller in here. That way we can just close it. Well, ideally <laughs> we'll close it. And then that way the controller is kind of hidden. And then when we need to use it to adjust the tune, um, we can just open it up and we're good to go. So there's that. We did end up finding out, I grabbed one of the fans off of the E36 and this is a 12 inch or a 10 inch, I think a 10 or a 12. I can't remember. Um, it looks like it'll fit just fine. I'm going to order two 14 inch fans and that should do plenty. I talked to one of my buddies, Candon, which he's had a come and swap C10 for a long time. So he kind of already has went through the paces of figuring this stuff out. And he has two E fans that are pulling through the front. And he said he hardly even has to turn one on. So um, not too worried about that. The radiator and stuff, I wanna finalize once I get hoses and I need to get some rubber um, padding so I can pad the underneath and between so that no holes get rubbed into anything. 
and we don't have any squeaks and rattles. Right now I'm about to put the power steering and vacuum pump back on um, just to kind of get that done and over with. And it looks like this, um, the, the Chevy power steering lines or hydro boost lines, because this is a hydro boost truck instead of a vacuum booster, which this is actually better. The brake pedal feels a lot better and the stopping power is better. Um, it looks like this should hook straight up to the first gen power steering pump. So that's, that's good news. Okay, so I just got the power steering pump and vacuum pump on. Uh, I totally remember why that was such a nightmare. Um, I keep, I always say, um, I'm so sorry. I don't even realize that I do it anyways. The vacuum pump and the power steering pump, if you separate them, there's like a keyway. And once you put the vacuum pump into the crankcase where the gear is engaged, you can't spin it anymore. And you can't see inside there. So like you have to keep spinning the keyway on this until they like finally match up. And it took forever, but I finally got it on. And then another win, the um, factory Chevy line didn't fit like directly but I was able to heat up the line and kind of bend it and it works and it's not routed super weird. It kind of goes down and loops out. It's probably a little long. It could definitely be shorter. Maybe in the future I'll get a different line made, but like that's sick. So, and then we just got to get a longer rubber hose here, but this is just a return. So I'm not like super, this would be super easy. I just got to get a little bit longer one, throw that on there. I actually might have some in the Jeep from when I blew a trans line. And then this down here, you'll see it's kind of in the way of the intercooler. I think I can just loosen this up and either twist it this way to miss it or twist it like around to where it's like facing that way. The uh, intercooler is going to need some attention regardless because as you can see, it's running straight into this. So we may be cutting a lot of this out to allow the piping to fit. Um, but super huge win this whole being in and then another thing the factory chevy throttle cable somehow literally snaps directly into the throttle bracket and then almost fits directly onto this so i'm gonna look up because the the little housing the i don't know what you would call this the plastic around it it needs to be trimmed up some because it has a ton of slack I don't know if I could take a brake line tool and like cut it back and then allow the slack to come out of it and then just cut the inside throttle cable and then put like a, a pinch ball on it. From the looks of it, it looks like I can do that, but I'm going to check in there. So it looks like we can use the factory Chevy throttle cable, which is sick. Another, well, this isn't a win. This is a really big L. So there was a line or cable coming out of the firewall that I thought was the throttle cable. And I had already like thought that I wasn't gonna be able to use the throttle cable because I thought this was the throttle cable, dumb me, right? So I'm like, okay, I can't use the throttle cable. I'm just gonna cut it to get it out of my way. My dumbass cut the hood latch cable. So now I need to buy a new hood latch cable. So that's kind of an, a huge L that I'm taking uh mostly because i'm sure that's probably not an easy thing to just get so kind of screwed myself there with that being said i did get the wheels on the truck and put it back on the ground again and we'll focus on trying to get this all buttoned back up i don't really want to put the grill and stuff in until obviously the intercooler and the radiators fastened in and all the lines and stuff and the piping are ran then i'll put the grill and stuff back in and then Another thing, so the reason I was waiting on the drive shaft for so long is because I thought I had to get a 47RE splined yoke to take into the drive shaft shop and say, hey, I need this yoke cut and put onto this drive shaft. But it turns out that all I need to know is the spline count on my trans and then they can order the yoke and all I have to do is bring the drive shaft in and give them a measurement. So the good news is I'm dropping this off hopefully tomorrow or this week. And that's like the big thing. Like once this is in the truck and I get a trans cooler in it, we can literally go and we can drive the truck. Like that. I can't express to you how excited I am about 
this whole thing being done. I'm hoping it's not crazy expensive. I'm like preparing myself for like close to, I don't know, $800, but I think it's going to be way less than that because all they should have to do is cut this end, shorten it, and then put the 47RE splined end on it. And then they may have to rebuild the carrier bearing. I don't know if they'll do that or not. Uh, uh, and then they'll put new U joints in. So, but with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. Hopefully it wasn't too all over the place. I honestly should, should have probably went back and kind of watched everything, but I'll just cross my fingers that it all makes sense. And super excited to get this thing done. I'm really trying to do all this in like as least amount of parts as I can. So I would say next part, I think part three, let's hope for uh, a first drive. Let's let's let let's set that as our next expectation to maybe get a first drive in and let's hope that there's not a like something that comes up that prevents us from doing that. But I don't see why we couldn't. The other big thing is the shifter, but I think I found a shifter that's relatively cheap. I think it's like 200 bucks. I'll have to put a ratchet shifter in the truck, which is fine. And hopefully that's not like a big process. I've never done ratchet shifter. I don't know how much of a pain it is, but hopefully it's easy. And then that's like the ratchet shifter and the drive shaft. This thing can literally run and drive around. Oh, fuel tanks. Yeah, got to do that. Got to get the bed off the truck. That's going to be a huge task because I don't have the man power to get the bed off. So we're probably going to have to rig some stuff up with the engine hoist and maybe talk my brother into helping me get the bed off. And then that way I can drop the tanks, run the fuel lines, and then uh, start cutting, notching the frame in the rear and lowering the back of the truck. So, but I'm going to keep, I, I keep blabbing on. So I'm going to end the video here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully this wasn't, uh, hopefully this was a good video for you guys to watch, but I'll see you in the next one.